Hey, everybody, it's Chris. If you're a sports fan like me, or you're just a fan of a great story, you got to check out Press Box Access, a sports history podcast hosted by Todd Jones. Todd sits down with fellow sports writers who experienced firsthand some of the biggest sports moments of the past 50 years, and they share some of the stories behind the stories, some of which they've only told to each other. What I personally love are the wild stories that you might not hear so much about on SportsCenter over the years. Like when Indiana-based sports journalist Bob Kravitz recounts the time Bobby Knight showed up naked to an office meeting with him, and then banned him from the Hoosiers locker room for the next three years because Bob wrote a story he didn't like. Or when Alexander Wolf tells a story about going out on the town in Chicago with Dennis Rodman and Carmen Electra in the middle of a Bulls playoff series. Or when Dan Wetzel talks about what it was like to be in the media room when Temple basketball coach John Chaney stormed into UMass coach John Calipari's press conference after a game and threatened to kill him. These wild and fun stories, paired with stories about real sports greatness, you know, like the 1970s Steelers being the greatest NFL dynasty ever, or the legendary rivalry between Larry Bird and Magic Johnson, and even the impact of protests for social justice issues in sports, make Pressbox Access a show you should check out. Pressbox Access is part of the Evergreen Podcast family, and it's available all the places you get your pods. And you can also find Pressbox Access on YouTube. Go check it out. Okay, round two. Name something that's not boring. A laundry? Ooh, a book club. Computer solitaire, huh? Ah, oh, sorry. We were looking for Chumba Casino. That's right. Chumbacasino.com has over 100 casino-style games. Join today and play for free for your chance to redeem some serious prizes. Chumbacasino.com. No purchase necessary. Forward, believe it by law. 18 plus. Terms and conditions apply. See website for details. All I want to do is to thank you. I don't know who you are. You let me change lanes while I was driving in my car. All I want to do is to thank you, even though I don't know. This week, we extend our gratitude to all the exceptional drivers out there. Perhaps one of you even served as inspiration for Geggy Ta's hit song, Whoever You Are. This laid back track, which encourages embracing lane changes, became a minor sensation in the mid 90s. Despite later featuring in car commercials, Geggy Ta struggled to replicate this success with another hit. Taylor Morden, a devoted fan of the band and director of Vampire, joins us this week to dissect the infectious charm of this tune. There's no parking in that trough, so I drive around all day, calming atmospheric haze, till I want to get on again, then all I have to say is all I want to do is to thank you, even though I don't know who you are. One hit is all you need. To make the money guaranteed And you can live off royalties Forever And it makes me wonder Is it just a wonder Or is it one hit thunder Alright, so welcome back, Taylor. Uh, this is probably your third or fourth appearance on One Hit Thunder. And I gotta tell you guys something crazy. I just realized a few minutes before we were about to start recording this episode about Geggy Ta, whoever you are. This song is about driving in your car, you know? Mm-hmm. And this yeah. album that this is on, Sacred Cow, came out on April 23rd of 1996, which is one day before I turned 16 and I got my license on my 16th birthday. I started wow. driving one day after this album with this song about driving came out. That's amazing. Yeah. That's so that's, good. That's top tier right there. Let me ask a big question before we dive into Geggy Ta. Woo. Do we do we talk about how important one of the members from Geggy Ta is now, or do we save that we'll, for the we'll end? We'll get there. We'll get there. Okay. Because <laughs> yeah. that, that was something I forgot about until I was doing research for this. And then I was like, oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, one of these dudes is very important in music right now. Yeah. Well, Taylor chose the song. And sometimes we ask people, like, why'd you choose the song? And they're like, I don't know. I just picked it off the list that Matt sent to me. But I would think that maybe there's a chance that Taylor would have had this album or been a Geggy Ta fan. Am I? Oh, right? man. Are you? Oh, man. Oh, I love Huge it. Huge Geggy Ta fan. Uh, one of my favorite records of the 90s. Wow. This song, right before. and. 
we're all friends. We know I'm a big ska punk, ska music guy. I'm a trumpet player. That was my world in the 90s. But the year before I found ska, this was my gateway into trumpets being in music. You know, there was this band and there was Cake. Yeah. And hearing this song on the radio, I, I very clearly remember being like, oh, man, there's a trumpet in this. And I went and I found the record and I listened to every song. I'm, I'm one of those people that's like this whole album is fantastic. It's got no skips. But it was just really like I have very vivid memories of sitting on the floor in my living room with my trumpet trying to figure out Geggy Ta songs. Love like, it. <laughs> I love that. So For hours. I I agree with you that Sacred Cow is a very good no skip record. I don't know if I think that stands for the album before and the album after this by no. Gaggy Ta. No, like no, no. like when I was listening to all of the other albums to refresh me because I have Sacred Cow. I don't have the albums before or after. So today was the first time I was exposed to the rest of their catalog and it really feels like there was some like magic moment that that was really clicking between the band and their producer where like this album is so like it sounds good it's interesting it it's weird it's almost like if you were to look at their three albums as like a uh as like an evolution the first album is like too weird to be even remotely like poppy or interesting and then this second album, Sacred Cow, finds this nice blend of like, it's still really weird and really experimental, but it's got like more of a pop, like radio friendly sound. And then I think the third album is just like forgettably bland because all of the weirdness seems to be sucked out of it. Like it just feels like a generic acoustic album at that point. Like it, this was like that perfect middle piece of them like finding their footing in both of those worlds. Uh, that I don't think they were able to find again, unfortunately. But it yeah. it's interesting to look at between this album and when their third album eventually came out. Their third album came out five years after <laughs> Sacred Cow, which might be part of why they really didn't have much of an, even really an opportunity to, to have a second hit. Um, in that time, though, one of the band members, Tommy Jordan, I... I found this fascinating played the steel drums on jack johnson's flute uh flake uh like the big first single from jack johnson uh mm. so i was like oh that's that makes the world of jack johnson and geggy ta interacting <laughs> makes a ton of sense to me i don't know a sing- <laughs> like, do i know a single jack johnson song who's jack you johnson should jack johnson he's like uh you might have avoided jack johnson with all of uh with what you listen to. I think I he's did. like, <laughs> he's like best buds with Dave Matthews. Like did a bunch okay. of stuff with Jimmy Buffett. Like he's is it a different. One, is he a different guy than Jason Mraz? He's same, <laughs> same world. Okay. Same okay. absolute I'm not world. A different guy. Okay. Um, the Jack I could John- five songs, but I don't know yeah. which of those two guys did either of those songs. Yeah. The Jack Johnson song that I'm talking about flake. That was probably one of his biggest like radio hits. It was the like, so tired of trying. It seems to me that may, Okay, so he sounds like Jason Mraz. All right. Hey, I got like a Jason Mraz, Dave Matthews mashup. Yeah. I, I got to yeah. tell you, now <laughs> Taylor's known this album forever. I guess you had it too, Matt. I'm yeah. new to Sacred Cow. Of course, I knew this song, but I've been listening to Sacred Cow all day, and I'm like, damn. A lot of times these mid nineties alternative bands that I didn't really dive into, I'm kind of like, ah, there's one or two songs that are okay. This album is pretty awesome. It's a mix of rock and jazz and indie rock and chaos. Like yeah. Yeah. when we're recording this album, there's even a little touch of today. I was listening to the new MGMT came out today and I was listening to that. And I'm like, these guys, on certain songs are almost like MGMT before MGMT existed. It's two guys yeah. just making experimental music. Some of it is poppy and catchy as hell, like this song. This song starts out like it's gonna be a <laughs> like the first thirty seconds of this song. I you would have no idea it, it's gonna go where it goes and being like this pop hit. Yeah, it takes a hard turn. Yeah, yeah. 
but I really like it. I think it's cool. I agree with you. It's really interesting that 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 build, like the keyboard, and like there's like these whispers, and then it goes into what I saw uh, one random blog. I was trying to find some information because there's not a lot of information about Gegita out there. So trying to find, I found a, a random dude's blog just writing about this song, and he described it as. He said, if, if there was a word to describe the opposite of grunge, Geggy Ta would be it. It's like, he's not wrong. When I So I pulled up, since it was so hard for me to find like that much information about them, or even I couldn't even find when they were on the Billboard charts. Like Google searches were not helping me find well, the specific date it peaked. Yeah, hold, but, hold on a second. It, this is one of those instances where we're kind of really stretching the definition of hit because this song now I remember seeing this on MTV. So yeah, as far as I'm concerned, if something was big enough to be seen on MTV, it was a hit, but that's not really true. This song only went to number 16 on the modern rock tracks chart. Not even like, yeah. I don't even think it, it went into the hot 100, which is why you're probably it, having it. It did, did it. but it peaked at 67. So okay. again, like barely, barely really making an impression there either. It was um, all over the radio here. I don't know. But if that's, that's what I mean. Thing. It hmm. was a radio hit. And yeah. the fact that it took until 2001 for a car to like a Mercedes Benz finally used it in a car commercial. Right. Like this should have been in car commercials the, the week it came out. Like, yeah. <laughs> like there's never like not only is it literally a song about a car, it has the laid back vibe of like driving with your windows down. Like this is the sound of driving around in the summer with your windows down. Yeah. But I, I wanted to look at like what was the, I wanted some type of chart representation. So what I ended up pulling up was what every single number one song was on the modern rock charts for the year 1996. <laughs> to like to like paint us a picture here of like how kind of out of the box their sound was to everything else. Um, so I'm going to rock through these real quick. So it started with Oasis Wonderwall that peaked at number one on December 30th and stayed at number one for nine straight weeks. Wow. <laughs> then Smashing Pumpkins 1979 Ooh. took that spot for one week before Oasis took it back. Okay. <laughs> then Alanis Morissette, ironic, uh, had it for three weeks. Oasis came back with Champagne Supernova for five weeks. The Cranberries Salvation had it for four weeks. And now we are about to hit a string of one hit wonders that were like vying for this top spot. Uh, Tracy Bonham, Mother Mother had it for three weeks. Good song. Dishwa Dishwalla yeah. Counting Blue Cars had it for one week. Hell yeah. The Butthole Surfers Pepper had it for three wow. weeks. Primitive Radio Gods had it for six weeks. Not six yes. weeks. Six That's weeks. Wild. Wow. Pearl Jam Pearl Jam song Who You Are, which I barely remember, had it for one week. 311 Down had it for four weeks. Ooh. The uh Eels, Novocaine for the Soul had it for two weeks. Sublime What I Got had it for three weeks. And then the last number one alternative slash modern rock single to hit number one on November 16th, Bush Swallowed began its seven week hold of the number one alternative song. So like really when I look at that list, I'm like maybe primitive radio gods. Yeah. Like maybe that's like the only band that even kind of feels like in this world. Yeah. Butthole surfers like, a little bit. <laughs> yeah. A little bit butthole surfers because of the experimental lyrically. stuff. But yeah. yeah, butthole surfers was way more uh antagonistic. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> experimental. Butthole surfers wins in a fight. Sure. <laughs> yeah, I don't think, Matt, I kind of disagree. I don't think that this song feels or this band feels that different. What what I think those charts show is like a, that mid-90s all alternative all over the place crazy. And yeah, Primitive Radio Gods is probably the closest thing where there's stuff being sampled and you have that mm -hmm. sort of, um, <laughs> I don't it's know. It's like chilled out. Both Ch of them are chilled out songs. Ch like, chilled out and I also mean, also that sort of sound sometimes where it sounds like it's underwater. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But what I got has a little bit of that too. Yep. Yeah, I would say it's what samples, I got would be that too. Samples and vibes. Yeah. And you know. I feel like Sublime I feel like Sublime doesn't get called out as much anymore, but I in my mind I felt like that was 
I knew some ska bands just from like watching shit like the box late at night where people would be like calling in to get a suicide machine song I on, but I, yeah, but I feel like sublime even more that like, I think real big fish and all of those bands blew it up even further from there. But to me, sublime was really the first big mainstream like thing where people were starting to be like, wait, who are these guys? And it was like them, no doubt. And then you started getting like the true third wave bands so it does also make sense to me that Geggy Ta had this song out just before you started to discover ska music existing. Like that timeline it. makes sense to me. Yep. Uh, also, I just had a, I was looking at some of the critical reviews for the Sacred Cow album, uh, at least the ones that were posted on Wiki. And, you know, Entertainment Weekly said it was a really fine, goo funky mess, chock full of weird hooks and dance feverish energy. But my favorite review is twofold. I like it because of what magazine wrote this review and also what they said. And I'll read what they said first. Sacred Cow continues the duel's tactful progression into being the modern version of Steely Dan, um, which I think like, all right, whatever. That was from the Trouser Press. Okay. They know they're Steely Dan over at the Trouser Press. <laughs> wow. So so this duo, we got to talk about this duo. Singer Tommy Jordan and keyboardist slash guitarist Greg Kirsten. Now, we're going to be talking about Greg Kirsten a lot in a minute. Yeah. But Greg Kirsten, what he said about this era when gay guitar started to take off. He said, I was struggling between playing jazz gigs. It makes sense. There's a lot of yep. jazzy elements in their music and playing with gay guitar in my twenties. We we're doing a lot of radio shows when that song broke, people started showing up and we would play our song and they were, there were screaming fans. It was a very brief moment. And then a reality check. I thought, Oh my God, I have a song on the radio. I can retire now. And of course it doesn't work like that. You need another single and another single after that. And we didn't have the follow up so it sounds like greg kind of agreed with what you were saying matt now i didn't listen to the follow-up album that came five years later but it sounds like he kind of knows uh because yeah. he was then doing session work he played keyboards on red hot chili peppers californication greg kirsten wow. did. Good album yeah. that's a good red hot chili peppers album yeah and then <laughs> and then from there greg kirsten formed the bird and the bee in 2006 uh, good band and they had a decent amount of success but greg kirsten we gotta we gotta talk about greg kirsten first of all one of his first credits as a producer is lily allen's all right still which man oh man one of my favorite albums it, i love that album and he helped co-write my favorite song on that album which is of course alfie about oh. her brother who's one of the stars of game of thrones That's right <laughs> <laughs> amazing yeah but he and then he stuck. Around, I mean, he's basically Lily Allen's producer. Yeah, he's the producer on every album she ever did, which led to him finally get it. He got nominated for Grammy Award for her album. It's not me. It's you. But he has produced for Adele Beck, the Foo Fighters, the Gorillas, Kendrick Lamar, Paul McCartney, Sia, Pink and a ton others. And I wrote down three specific songs that we have to draw attention to that he co-wrote. Yep. <laughs> he co-wrote Hello yeah. with Adele. He co-wrote Stronger What Doesn't Kill You for Kelly Clarkson. And he co-wrote Chandelier for yeah. Sia, which are like three incredible songs. And he also produced and co-wrote pretty much all of Kelly Clarkson's Christmas album, which means that he co-wrote Underneath the Tree, oh, which wow. is one of the best Christmas songs of the last like decade in my mind. It really is. Wow, I didn't have that. I didn't know that one. That's yeah. This dude, That's it's wild. so funny that we're talking about a band that he is one half of on a one hit <laughs> wonder podcast. Because this dude is responsible for so many hits. Massive, <laughs> Massive hits. It's insane. Like the the guy he co-wrote those and he co-wrote Gegitas, whoever you are. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that was what got his foot in the door as a songwriter. Yeah. <laughs> Do you think Lily Allen was like, get me the whoever you yeah. are guy? <laughs> get me the Gegita guy. <laughs> well, I got to tell you, this guy, Billboard, had a staff. This was like their staff put together this list of the top 50 greatest producers of the 21st century. And Greg Kirsten, they had him at number 18, above the following people. Greg Kirsten was above all of the following people I'm about to name. Linda Perry, 
Benny Blanco, Missy Elliott, Dave Cobb, Dr. Luke, Metro Boomin, Rick Rubin, Rob Cavallo, and Dr. Dre. <laughs> I, that's pretty okay. impressive. Do you want to know who he was I, below? I can tell you who he was below if you want some names. I So I want to just throw a few things out there because you said this was 21st century, right? Yes. I mean, a few of those artists, I feel like their their hits were stronger in the 20th century than Rob 21st Cavallo century. Rob Cavallo and Dr. So Dre. Can, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I could say that. Also, just get Dr. Luke wiped out of existence. Like, shouldn't be on any list ever again. Yeah. Well, <laughs> but yeah, true. Some of the people that were above Greg, yeah. this, is, this isn't to put down Greg, but some of the people that were above him were Lil Jon, Mark Ronson, Jack Antonoff, Noah Forty Shabib, Drake's producer, uh, Timbaland, mm. uh, you know, Pharrell, and Max Martin. Those people were above okay. him. But still, he's in good company. He's in very, very good company. Yeah. I feel like Little John's the only one where I'm like, how many hits was Little John creating yeah. in the twenty first century? Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> but I guess in the early part, that makes sense. Yeah. Do you guys remember this video? Because I even remember watching the music video oh, where yeah. it's like three dudes crammed in a tiny car. And it's just edited into out. it's edited into like a driver safety video. Right. Yep. <laughs> like and they tried to recreate the old film look. And it's it's pretty good. Yeah. It's it's really good. And I feel like they copied that video has been kind of copied in car commercials before they were using this song. Because I feel like the the image of a band jamming in a car with the windows down is one that I've seen after this. I mean, oh, I, yeah. I think of the uh, was it, there was that one band, the free credit report dot com band definitely had at least one video <laughs> where they're playing inside of a car. But I feel like I've seen car commercials advertising that as well of the people hanging out in the car, rocking out. Yeah, I feel like the free credit report dot com band started as a geeky talk cover band. <laughs> That's probably it. I have no proof, but and you might be right. Sounds right. Sounds right. Hey guys, it is Ryan. I'm not sure if you know this about me, but I'm a bit of a fun fanatic when I can. I like to work, but I like fun too. It's a thing. And now the truth is out there. I can tell you about my favorite place to have fun. Chumba Casino. They have hundreds of social casino style games to choose from with new games released each week. You can play for free anytime, anywhere and each day brings a new chance to collect daily bonuses. So join me in the fun. Sign up now at ChumbaCasino.com. No purchase necessary. BGW. Void or prohibited by law. See terms and conditions 18 plus. I'm not going to lie here. I've become a factor fanatic lately. I'm a busy guy and getting to eat restaurant quality meals that are ready to heat and eat in two minutes has been amazing. Eating better is easy with Factor's delicious, ready-to-eat meals. Every fresh, never-frozen meal is chef-crafted, dietitian approved and ready to go in just two minutes. You have 35 different options to choose from every week, including Calorie Smart, Protein Plus, and Keto. And also, there are more than 60 add-ons to help you stay fueled up and feeling good all day long. I've been spreading the word to everyone I know, not just here on the podcast, but in person as well. Factor is the perfect solution if you're looking for fast, premium options with no cooking required. You get as much or as little as you need by choosing your meals every week. Plus, you can pause or reschedule your deliveries anytime. And the math doesn't lie. Factor is less expensive than takeout. Plus, considering every meal is dietitian approved, it's also nutritious and delicious. So what are you waiting for? Get started today by heading to factormeals.com slash one hit 50 and use the code one hit 50 to get 50% off. That's code one hit 50. The words one hit and the number 50 that is at factormeals.com slash one hit 50 to get 50% off. Hey, do you have an idea for a podcast, but don't know where to start? Or do you have an already existing podcast that you want to take to the next level? Well, check out WeKnowPodcasting.com. From concept development to theme music to editing to logos, WeKnowPodcasting.com is a one-stop shop for all things pod. Don't hesitate to hit us up. We're very nice. Is this song really about just someone thanking someone for letting you cut over I, into the lane? I was trying to figure that out. What else would it be? I can't find like a metaphor or a deeper meaning. The only other part is... Like that, Gaggy Ta is on the mic. <laughs> that's that's the only well, other thing about the you know lyrically in this song. It seems like 
that that's that's the only I I almost wondered when I got to that second verse if they if the song starts out as being about like thanking the person for letting them change lanes in the car and then they kind of use that second verse to also be like hey also thank you to all the fans that have like been there supporting us because he says like all I want to do is do is tune in to Radio Radio LA LA Yula. Because uh, we're broadcasting live and what we want to hear from you on the mic is Geggy Ta, but there's a whole lot more for all of y'all. Let us hear you. Let us hear you in a big, in a echoing, big echoing holla. holla. Yeah. So I'm wondering if that's almost them just kind of being like, hey, thanks. Thanks for buying that first album. I hope you like the second one. Oh, <laughs> like- <laughs> OK. So that could, could be, be that could be the metaphor here. It could be literal. It could be that yeah. they were driving to the radio station right. to go yeah. do a, a show. <laughs> Right. Yeah. Like they get there. So thanks. Yeah. I didn't know if there, if I was missing some deeper meaning, but Hey, if that's all it is, is a thank you to the people who are polite drivers. I like to think of myself as a polite driver. I'm always yeah. letting people go over. I don't get all fired up like about whatever. I get fired up at rude drivers. That's where I sure. get angry is if I'm driving and like there's, I've said this before, my number one road rage level pet peeve is when you're in bumper to bumper traffic and someone who thinks that their time is more important than yours is just blowing past you illegally in the shoulder, I will lose my goddamn mind every time I see it. I just want to see a cop car pull out of nowhere and pull that person over every single time. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm, but yes, no, yeah, people that's, make mistakes. That's more, uh, yeah. that's more the offspring song about yes. Red Ridge, right? Yeah, I got a bad so habit. These are companion songs. Yeah. Diggy and bad habit. <laughs> I, I prefer say, I do way. love there's there is another <laughs> lyric in the song that I really like, which is uh, so I drive around all day coming atmospheric haze. I don't know what that means, but I like how it sounds. I think it's causing <laughs> atmospheric haze because of yeah. his car's emissions. Ah, ah. That's... I, I, that's I didn't read the lyrics, but that's how I heard it in 1996. And that's what I believe it to be. That that makes more sense. Listen, Google lyrics have led me wrong before and they will well, do AI it again. now. It's just listening <laughs> to the track and AI. Coming atmospheric haze. I could also see you're, you're driving around. Yes, you're contributing to and you're also seeing if they're in L.A., you have right. You have yeah. the smog and coming stuff. atmospheric haze. Yep, I think that's. I mean, it's for sure about pollution and saving the environment. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah. So, I want to talk about Greg Kirsten a little bit more. We got off of him pretty quick. <laughs> okay. uh, sure. The dude has nine Grammys. He won Producer of the Year back to back in 2017 and 2018. He also produced Tegan and Sarah's Heartthrob. Uh, yes, both. He, he collaborated with Adele on the albums 25 and 30. Um, so much stuff like, dude, he produced Paul McCartney's Egypt Station album. Like, yeah. I, regardless of what you think of that album, if Paul McCartney wants you to produce his album, I don't think it gets, it doesn't get any bigger than that, does it? No. Well, and also like, at at the end of the day, I feel like ninety five percent of musicians who play music probably like the Beatles, but I think Geggy Ta really likes the Beatles, so that yeah. has to have been a really yeah. cool thing to work with with a Beatle, just based on the vibe of their sounds. Hell yeah! <laughs> Do you think at any point he went up to accept one of those Grammys and he said? Listen, all I want to do is to thank you. <laughs> it's, Even though I don't know who you are. <laughs> it's it's wild that these people that we find out about on this podcast, this once again, taking it back to uh, Primitive Radio Gods, we found out that on that episode that the guy, JD, who was like the manager who was like in their corner and insisted that they keep going until that song is finally hit, is the guy who runs crush management, who like yeah. is the biggest management company of like everybody from Weezer green day, freaking yeah. everybody, everybody you can imagine. It, it, but we didn't know well, that. We're just like, who is well, this guy also- that really insisted the primitive radio God stick it out from this, <laughs> from this demo song. Well, this is also, I think in the, in the same line that we've stumbled into with like Dan Wilson and Greg Alexander of yeah. like one hit wonders who have, literally created a full successful career off of the the power of a single song like mm-hmm. you know i i not that i think Gagita was what sprung board 
him into producing. Well, why but, not? Like it didn't. Well, I mean, it didn't hurt. Both meeting, you don't know. Yeah, you never know. I, I just, I feel like the timeline is so separated <laughs> from the song coming out in his first production job. I could that, find uh, it's possible. On the other hand, we have all this amazing stuff about Greg Kirsten. I, I guess. The- <laughs> The only thing that any of us could find about Tommy Jordan is he played steel drums on a Jack Johnson song. Is that the only piece Uh, of info you have about Tommy Jordan? A pretty big Jack Johnson. Listen, the Jack Johnson heads who are listening, they're like, he played on Flake? Like, they're going to be super excited about this. Okay, if you say so. (laughs) I think they call themselves Jack Offs. (laughs) Jack Offs. Um, Jack Offs. Yeah, I found one, one post somewhere. I was trying to look this guy up. And he did like a, a drop in acoustic set with somebody a couple of years ago. Okay. Cool. And they were like, dude from Gay Guitar is here. So I he's not dead, is okay. what I could find. Good. I'm glad. And to listen, hear that. he's played let's let's show respect where respect's due. He played steel drums. I just had to Google this. He played steel drums on what was decided to be 2002's best performing song on the adult alternative airwaves chart on Billboard. Wow. Really? <laughs> Yeah. Okay. That song did really, really How do well. I not know this song then? I I, I know some probably... Jason Mraz, like I'm yours. That's Jason Mraz. Yeah. But I feel like yeah. I feel like there's no way you listen to a song that in the first thirty seconds was just an acoustic guitar and steel drums and stuck around to see I what like happened. Steel <laughs> <drums. laughs> I like steel drums. I like I like island and I feel music. Like... <laughs> I feel like if you check out the song, it's not like, oh, he played steel drums and you get the song is mostly steel drum. Okay. Like it's like steel drums and acoustic guitar <laughs> and a bass line. <laughs> that sounds but, uh, up my alley. I don't know. Yeah. It seems like Tommy Jacob, who is literally the voice Tommy of Jordan. Gaita. Tommy Jordan. Sorry. Tommy what Jacobs. Isn't that like a Tommy clone? <laughs> I have no clue, man. I also called him John. Uh, I think I called him Jake Johnson a couple times because I've been watching Jake New Johnson Girl. from New so Girl. There's just, there's just a lot. There's a lot happening in my brain right now. Yeah, Tommy Jordan for being the singer of this band uh, definitely does not have the 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 level of clout that we're finding for for Greg. We've talked for almost thirty minutes and we haven't mentioned what the band name means. Mm-hmm. Did you happen to see what Geggy Ta means? I did. They both had younger sisters who couldn't pronounce their names when they were very young. So Greg was Geggy and Ta, I guess, was Tommy. So yeah. Geggy Ta, I like it. So they just combined how that's their sister great. mispronounced their names and made it into a band. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's beautiful. Hey, Not when... the best version I've heard for a band name, but certainly far from the worst version of how a band has gotten its name. <laughs> you know, I talked about how this album came out the day before... I turned 16 and got my driver's license. So I I looked back at April of 1996 to see like what happened other than me getting my driver's license. And it was like the most, usually I can find like 20 things. It was like the most uneventful month of like noteworthy things. But I will tell you one thing, one exactly one week before that album came out, Anya Taylor joy was born. (laughs) So, So hmm. Chris, you should update that Wikipedia to include that you got your driver's yeah, license. I'll, try, I'll do my best. <laughs> I, Online basis, Chris Valios I, gets his driver's license. I got a game yeah. for you guys. I was hoping you <laughs> did. Let's do this. You guys want to play a game? Yeah. So here's how it's going to work. It's songs about driving. All right. And okay. I'm going to, I'm going to read a lyric from a song about driving and if you could be the first one to name what song that is. Now, here's how you're going to buzz in. Uh, Matt, if you want to if you want to buzz in, you have to say Geggy. I was hoping that this is where we were going <laughs> Taylor, with this perfect. Taylor, you're <laughs> Taylor, you're Ta. Of course. So, of course. so whoever whoever buzzes in first, there are what how many lyrics? I have 7 lyrics here. So, yeah. well, oh, man. the the stakes are high here. We got to see Do we need the song and artist or just the song? If you if you get the song, it's fine. I think you'll know okay. who all the art. If you know the song, you're going to know the artist, I think, okay. for all of Just these. making sure. All right. You guys ready? Ready. Lyric yep. one. From Mozambique to those Memphis nights, the Kyber Pass to Vancouver's lights. Fuck. I know this lyric. I'm just trying to, I'm trying to take what you said and sing it to whatever <laughs> melody yeah. it's actually sung to. I'm surprised. If you guys need a hint, I, I don't know it. Can I'm you just... sit? Can you actually sing it instead of read it? No, for a second? I'm not going to do that. I'll give it away. 
But mm. I will say here, I'll give you guys a hint. This is a song we've done on One Hit Thunder. I know. No, <laughs> that doesn't help me. It's a one hit wonder. Ah, uh, is it the theme from Where in the World is Carmen Sandiego? No. Oh, 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 uh, Geggy, Geggy. All right, Geggy. <laughs> it's it's Life is a Highway that's, by Tom That's Cochran. right. <laughs> <laughs> From Mozambique to those Memphis to nights, the Kyber Man. Pass to Vancouver's yeah. lights. Yeah. lights. Knock me down, get, get up, up again. again. I'm in my road, my lonely man. <laughs> yeah. Very man, good. what a song. Uh, I've really turned around on that song since we recorded that episode. That song's great. <laughs> Life is a highway. Okay. Uh, lyric two I got no car and it's breaking my heart, but I found a driver and that's a start. I don't recognize this lyric at all. <laughs> no geggy or ta here. Yeah, I'm already tapping you, out. You guys, I can't even. You guys tapping out on this Can one? You said it one more time. Just I got no car and it's breaking my heart, but I found a driver and that's a start. Yeah, I got nothing. Yeah, I don't you think know? I know it either. Beep 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 beep. Yeah, <laughs> that's drive my car. Uh. Sorry, guys. Not my favorite Beatles song. I like that song. <laughs> it's a good song. All right, Matt's still in the lead. He got it's it's one zero. Lyric three. Yep. I'm in the mood. The rhythm is right. Move to the music. Yeah, we can roll all night. Yeah. Remember, these are all songs about driving. Yeah. Can you say that one again? I'm in the mood. The rhythm is right. Move to the music. Yeah. We can roll all night. Yeah. Ta. Oh, go oh. for it. I, I this is just a guess, but is it get out of my dreams, get into my car? Sorry, it is not. Yeah. Uh, you got a hint for us? Um, it's not that one. A hint. Yeah, I don't yeah. I don't have a hint for you. Then I'm not gonna I'm not gonna tag in on this one. Right. I'm just gonna keep my one point lead. Sorry guys. That was slow ride from Fog Hat. Oh. Uh, All right. Take it easy. Take it easy. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't know this was gonna be so hard. All, the lyrics I know. <laughs> All right, lyric four. I'll be the sun shining on you. Hey, Cinderella, step in your shoe. I'll be your nonstop lover. Get it while you can. Your non-stop miracle. I'm your man. I'm trying to think of a song where some guy calls a girl Cinderella. I'm going to be shocked if one of you guys don't get this one. I'll be the sun shining on you. Hey, Cinderella, step in your shoe. I'll be your non-stop lover. Get it while you can. Your non-stop miracle. I'm your man. I mean, I'm going to I get gaggy. Okay, go for it. I'm going to just say what he said earlier. Is it get out of my dreams into my car by Billy? Ocean? <laughs> it sure is. <laughs> That's yeah. why I couldn't believe that he guessed yeah. it the, the, the one before. <laughs> well, I guessed it before. Cause I didn't know the words to it. Yeah. So. <laughs> That's, I'll be the sun shining on you. Hey, Cinderella step in your shoe. I'll be your nonstop lover. Get it while you can. Your nonstop miracle. I'm your man. Get out of my yeah. dreams. <laughs> I've, in this moment, I've realized that I do not know any of the verses. To that song. Yeah. That's the pre-chorus. <laughs> that like sets it all up. That, That's the problem. The chorus is so strong. Yeah. It's kind of yeah. like Higher Love. Like mm. I know Higher Love's a great song, but I think if you ask me any of the verses to that, I'd be like, I don't know, man. It's that, bring me a higher love. <laughs> do, 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 do. All right. So, Matt, you got a 2-0 lead. We're on lyric number five. Remember, these are all songs about driving. Yep. Jack be nimble. Jack be quick. Oh, 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 oh. Take a ride on a West Coast kick. Oh, 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 oh. I definitely feel like I know this one. I totally know this one. But the oh, I feel like the oh, oh, oh. <laughs> yeah. Help even more. I'm like ignoring <laughs> I'm them as I'm repeating I'm not singing the O's head. to the melody. No, I know you're not. <laughs> And the melody of those O's would give it away in 0.2 seconds. I almost want you to want you to do it for the speed run of it all. If you guys want me to 
Yeah, let's do it. Let's. I've yeah. got a two point two zero lead. What's the worst that could happen? Yeah, I'm not even in it's, this game. <laughs> Jack, be nimble. Jack, be quick. Oh, take a, go, go, go. <laughs> Holiday Road. You got it. Oh, Holiday Road. Ah, oh, damn it. Yep. Okay. All right, it's two one. We got two Back left. In it. Two left. All right. Lyric six. Like a band of gypsies, we go down the highway. We're the best of friends, insisting that the world ah. go for it. Oh, on the road again. You got it. Damn it. It's two, two. All right. Tiebreaker time. Here we go, man. It comes down to this. I don't know if this is an easy one or not, but remember, these are all songs about driving. When I'm holding your wheel, all I hear is your gear with my hand on your grease gun. Ooh. It's like a disease, son. This is a challenging one. I mean, rhyming grease tra- gun with disease, son. That's <laughs> the next level. Ooh. Oh, boy. Um, I think I'm going to stay out of this one. Oh, wow. <laughs> when I'm holding your wheel, all I well, hear... Well, wait, is there any... You're not deducting points for it being it... wrong, correct? No. Ta. Oh, go for okay. it. Is it Highway to Hell? It is not. Sorry. Yeah. All right. I mean, I guess, it's, I guess he's out and I can't do anything but keep it a tie for being wrong. So I guess Geggy, um, <laughs> go for it. I don't, I, I don't know why, because I don't think that I have ever heard this man say disease son, <laughs> but the car analogy doesn't feel too far off from other lyrics in Born to Run by Bruce Springsteen. So yeah. I'm going with that. Sorry. It was actually... I'm in love with my car from Queen. Oh, by Queen. Yep. Yes. Yep. That's not a good song. That's who says Grease Gun. <laughs> <laughs> that's my game, guys. That's my. I liked it. It was a good game. That's my game. Uh, One game. But I don't know. What do we, how do we feel about Gagi Ta? <sighs> so good. So, oh, okay. We're saying so good. Thunder or Blunder is how I, I should say this, I guess. is uh, Right. I should know that by now. Yeah. Uh, I guess you. you I, you're saying thunder. I, I was a thunder before, you know, right. for 25 years, this song has been a thunder for me. I think I'm actually going to go blunder wow. and I'm going to go blunder for a couple reasons. I'm going to go blunder because like I said, the album before this and the album after this, not great. I do like sacred cow a lot, but I also think that this is there. There's no like hidden could have been the bigger single song on sacred cow this is the standout song hey i will say that the song right after what the third song the third track on the album the like punk song yeah i forgot song you know he's crying lately that one yeah i think what what's sacred it, cow what's it called yeah what's the third the third track the first track is like a a, a voice message from his grandfather then the, se- yep. the second song is whoever you are but the third song that song's awesome. Third song is called "Lot of Stuff." That song. Oh, that song's great. That song's that, the awesome. video for that song. Yep. they did in a way that I had always wanted to do a video, where they went to a '90s electronic store yep. and filmed it on the VHS cameras in the store, like yep. brought their own tape, just used the ones in the store and never took them out of the store. Right. Yeah, it's pretty it's good so video. Good. Yeah, in the mid '90s, that could have been an alternative hit. I think that song. It could have really worked. Yeah. It, I just I think that everything that Greg has done afterwards has been impressive i just to me when i think of like thunder or blunder right in my mind i think if i'm saying a song is thunder i am saying to the audience hey you really need to dive so much deeper into this band because you're missing out on so much great stuff and as much as i like the album sacred cow i'm also saying you know if whoever you are is the only song that you know by geggy ta like i that's fine. Okay. <laughs> That's, you're so you're like, not rating the song. You're rating the rest of their catalog. The, entire, yeah, the rest of their catalog. The entire Got list. It. Yeah, I'm looking at it through the lens of Geggy Cow. If we're just talking <laughs> about the song, like, yeah, whoever you are is an amazing song. But Geggy Ta themselves, maybe maybe a bit of a blunder. Maybe a bit of a blunder on there. Um, so, Chris, you got to tie break it. Yeah, I'll tie break it. So I can see a lot of times one of the criteria – for deciding thunder or blunder is should this band have been bigger than they were? Did they have yeah. all these hidden gems that should have been hits and 
it was a, a bad deal that they only had one hit. That's kind of a good point that Matt started to make is like, I really like this Sacred Cow album. I'm surprised at how much I like it. It's weird as hell. I like shit that's weird as hell. Um, like I said, I like that third song uh, and on the album, but I do agree that this is like their one hit that I heard. One song that it's kind of lucky that this song was even a hit. It's catchy. It's catchy, yeah. but like when you named all those songs that were number one in the mid nineties, I was like, geez, hit after hit after hit, like yeah. undeniable hit. And the fact that Geggy Ta with their experimental sort of catchy little jazzy song even made a blip on the radar is, is kind of impressive. But at the same time, I'm taking into consideration what a beast Greg Kirsten is. And also, and I know that that's not necessarily Geggy Ta, but I, I can't help but know that. <laughs> and also <Yeah. laughs> um, the fact how much I like this album, that I feel like it would be a damn shame for me to go blunder on this. I think I have to go thunder on Geggy Ta. Well, I think if anyone's there out go. there listening and you haven't checked out Geggy Ta, you, you probably should check out this album, Sacred Cow. It's pretty cool. Well, and I've got another message for the people who are listening to this. Before they even play Sacred Cow, they should also maybe check out VampireMovie.com hey. because our boy is on the show because he's got an Indiegogo campaign to promote Hell for yeah. one of the most interesting horror comedies I've heard about in a really long time. So, sir, the stage is all yours to tell us why people should be checking out everything about Vampire. Oh, because it's it's almost as good as Geggy Ta. Um, <laughs> it, it's exactly as weird as Geggy Ta, uh, and it takes place in the mid '90s. So I'm gonna call uh, Geggy Ta see if we can get a song on the soundtrack. But uh, it's an indie horror comedy that we shot here in the Pacific Northwest. Um, and what makes it stand out, hopefully, from the other 452,000 indie horror comedies that come out this year, is that it's a mix of live action and cartoons. So like Evil Dead 2 meets Who Framed Roger Rabbit. Ooh. So we've got, because it's it's also based on Bambi, because public domain says we can do whatever we want because it's the future. Nice. Um, <laughs> but, you know, I'm not a deer wrangler. So we just said, what if what if all the animals were cartoons? And then we, we just went with that. It's wild. But making cartoons is expensive and time consuming. So that's where you come in, Indiegogo backers. Uh, cause we want to finish this insane horror comedy, Roger Rabbit nineties movie. Hell yeah. And you've, um, you've told me, uh, that like something that I think is really interesting and cool is your vision for this is, so let's say a cartoon deer is attacking a live action human that the gore won't be animated. The, the gore <laughs> is happening in real time. So it'll be like yes. gore effects coming out of yes. the human while the cartoon is eating them. Practical which I blood, think is yeah. awesome. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So just because the monster had to be cartoon doesn't mean the blood has to be cartoon. We use gallons <laughs> and gallons and gallons of blood, uh, fake blood. <laughs> to, I love this. To do it as real as we could. And so we've got, you know, as much as I could wrap my head around how to make people interact with a cartoon thing that's not there. Uh, we did a lot of that. And so, yeah, there's, there's real gore and cartoon animals. Dude, it has, I, I'm, my mind's kind of blown. Has, I don't think <laughs> I've ever heard of, well, I guess it hasn't been done that much at all. Really. You would have thought that who, who framed Roger rabbit would have opened the door right. to like the mix of live action with animation. And it really it has only like the cool world, cool world. Yeah. 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 That's There's, what it led to. And then that was such a disaster that they stopped doing it. Yeah. yeah. Cool World was supposed to be, I mean, if you look at what the movie Cool World was supposed to be, it was very interesting. So the original intention of the movie, because it's about a guy who creates a cartoon character, goes into that cartoon world, and at some point has sex with that cartoon creation. That was essentially supposed to be the first like 10 minutes of the movie. And then the movie was that the cartoon character gives birth to a child that is half human, half animated, and it Whoa. comes to the real world seeking revenge for the father that created Whoa. him as this like freakish monstrosity that can't <laughs> wow. exist in either world. Uh, and then the studios were like, 
yeah, we're not in the business for an R-rated, very expensive niche movie. Like, you're just going to make a slightly edgier Roger Rabbit, sir. Right. Oh, that's all. Well, we, went, we went hard R with this one. Yeah. This is for sure an R-rated Roger <laughs> Rabbit. But also, if we raise enough money on the Indiegogo, I'm getting the rights and we're making Cool World 2. Nice. Cool World 2 dude, it's, it, that sounds insane. That's such <laughs> – and I, I like – I love the idea of what that would look like to have like a person who's half cartoon, half human. Like that's yeah. awesome. <laughs> Two things. First of all, when you started to say, if we raise enough money, Taylor, I thought you were going to say, we're going to release the NC 17 version. Of this. <laughs> uh, oh no. Uh, but also, yeah, but still it's surprising to me. Okay. Cool world. Wasn't a hit movie, but Roger rabbit was so huge and so yeah. groundbreaking. And it's a freaking awesome movie. Yeah. It's a really good other... movie. Well, the new the... Chippendale Rescue Rangers movie is like that. Yeah. yeah. I didn't and see that. it was that. good. I like that movie. Yeah, that was really, really good. I think the problem also, like, we on, so on the Horror Movie Night Patreon page, we'll review non-horror movies that people vote on. And we recently did Rockadoodle, uh, the mm. Don Bluth movie from the 90s. And let me tell you, that movie is three or four years after who framed Roger Rabbit. And there is a single sequence where a adult human child is dancing with cartoon characters. And the, like the coloring is all weird and the framing is all off. So like, what is an adult child? Yeah. Well, you know, <laughs> me, you're just yes. saying yeah. <laughs> adult but, child. <laughs> but I, I think, I think the secret that who framed Roger Rabbit had that a lot of other people couldn't match was, the combination of Robert Zemeckis and Walt Disney and the backing yeah. of all of Warner brothers as well. Like it was a very expensive movie mm. to make yeah. framed Roger Rabbit. And it's probably one of those movies that despite how successful it is, I am sure that Hollywood math says that it is still nowhere near turning a profit really um, based on how, well, I'm not sure if you're familiar with Hollywood math, but Hollywood creative math, accounting. Yeah. yeah. Creative accounting is very creative. Accounting says that back to the future hasn't made profits yet. Right. Oh, oh, okay. Cause they'll be like, Oh yeah, no, your, your film costs this much, but we put this much into advertising right. and we put, you understand much... it in terms of record labels. Right. Yes. Okay. Right. Yeah. Oh, sorry. We didn't recoup because we spent all this money promoting the thing. Well, did you, yeah. or, yeah. <laughs> Like, you know, or did you put our name on the list? Of that's why. Um, that what's for? his name? Uh, Thomas Wilson, who was uh, Biff in the in the Back to the Future movies, has stated that there will never be a fourth Back to the Future movie, or if there is, he will not be a part of it because he's like my whole contract was based on working cheap on getting a percentage of the profits, and I've yet to see a single Dude, piece of profits all these years later. I got to talk to that guy, <laughs> Taylor. I've talked about this on the podcast many times. No one told a young punchline that like Tom Wilson, we always thought like, well, you got to recoup this money. Like, so we, we want to try to break even. We don't want to like take tour support or extra <laughs> money for, you didn't know that we, was the only money you'd ever get. Right. Yeah. We didn't know. <laughs> like if I could go back in time, I would have taken everything and asked for more we didn't know yeah. we were just like yeah. we were so used to doing everything ourselves for so long and it's like you want to recoup right. like common sense that when we got to a level where it's like oh we could get like we we're like no we don't want to take that how dumb were we <laughs> you just believe the people when they tell you i yeah. mean <laughs> the music industry and the movie industry are identical in that way that just you know doing it yourself is completely different because you try to save a dollar because every dollar you save is a dollar you earn, right? You yeah. print your own t-shirts as a band so that when you sell them, you get $6 instead of $4 or yeah. whatever the, you know, the profit difference is. But then you get to a certain point where you're getting a percentage of uh, net gross. I don't know how money works, but yeah, net right. profit <laughs> off of a thing that will never reach a profit because somebody in a business building somewhere is like, Oh man, we spent too much on lunch last week, so I guess right. the punchline record didn't break even. Right. Yeah. You're like, I didn't authorize this lunch. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's crazy. Well, well, that's why it's important to support independent filmmakers right. and independent musicians. And 100%. a good way to support this particular independent filmmaker is vampiremovie.com. Thank you. This 
This has been One Hit Thunder. One Hit Thunder is hosted by Chris Ophelios of the band Punchline and produced by Matt Kelly of Geekscape.net. Underneath me, you're hearing A Beautiful Green off the Punchline album Action, which turns 20 this year. Visit punchlinemusic.com for any upcoming news on the band and upcoming Action anniversary tour dates. Our podcast is on Patreon now. Find us at patreon.com backslash OHT podcast for early access to episodes, bonus conversations, and a chance to vote on future songs for us to cover. Be sure to rate, review, and subscribe to us on any podcasting app and tune in next week for more One Hit Thunder. Slots, you can get lucky just about anywhere. Dearly beloved, we are gathered here today to. Has anyone seen the bride and groom? Sorry, sorry, we're here. We were getting lucky in the limo and we lost track of time. <gasps> no, Lucky Land Casino with cash prizes that add up quicker than a guest registry. In that case, I pronounce you lucky. Play for free at LuckyLandSlots.com. Daily bonuses are waiting. No purchase necessary. Void were prohibited by law. 18 plus. Terms and conditions apply. See website for details. Hey, this is Dewey Halpas, host of Peer Pleasure on the Sound Talent Media Podcast Network. Join me each week as I explore another long-form conversation with one of your favorite musicians, actors, comedians, or creatives. From Chino Moreno of the Deftones, John Gorley of Portugal the Man, to Fat Mike from No Effects, and Ian Mackay from Fugazi and Minor Threat, we go all over the map. From Fallout Boy to Slayer, Peer Pleasure has it all. Check us out now on Sound Talent Media.